history of presenting problem. Annie was referred to ACT by the police due to concerns from her neighbour that she was hoarding and living in squalor. As such, ACT were inclined to contact her legal guardian Terence for collateral on the issue. Terence reports that Annie has a history of mania and a complicated medical history. He reports that she's been deteriorating the last several days, even pushing him and shouting at him. He reported that she's been throwing items around her apartment and talking nonsense. Terence further confirmed that she was in fact hoarding and living in squalor, and that she wasn't meeting her physical and mental health needs. He felt that there needs to be more supports in place in managing her in the community, and that she will need a mental health review. Terence added that Annie may not be receptive of a review, and has a history of becoming aggressive when unwell. A home visit was conducted with an accredited person. On assessment, Annie presented as pressured and irritable. She denies feeling mentally unwell and stated that she's at her baseline. She denies any sleep or mood issues. She stated that she was glad that lockdown was over as she needs to buy wool. However, wool was noted to be in abundance all throughout her unit. Annie was observed to be administering her insulin in an unsafe manner. She was reusing her insulin needles. Annie is unvaccinated, citing a medical exemption. However, she was unable to produce any evidence of this. Police were called to assist in the safe transfer of the patient to hospital. Mental health assessment. 65 year old female. Obese with Cushingoid appearance, food visible around her mouth, and appears to have thrown food as there are remnants on the floor, casually dressed. She rates her mood as tired. Her speech was difficult to interrupt, however not quite at the point of being pressured. She would shout intermittently. Her affect was very labile, from profoundly irritable to the point of shouting, all the way to tearful and distressed, crying at times. Her thought form was tangential. Her thought content varied significantly. She's difficult to follow and quite tangential, changing topics from Dr. Lange to Shane Gould to Olympic medals and Don Talbot with, within one sentence. Annie wishes she was dead. She feels this way as she's lost all control of her life. However, on further assessment, she actually denies any active suicidal intent or having a suicide plan. She says that her place is clean. She's just living next to dictators and fascists who don't like her feeding the birds. She plans to sell all of her property so she can buy a place with a herb garden and then so she can have a dog. She's been compliant with her thyroxin, however, strongly dislikes all other medications. She got particularly irritable when aspirin was brought up. No evidence of perceptual disturbances, oriented to time, place, person, day, date. Able to state the months, months of the year backwards correctly. Annie has impaired insight and judgment. She feels the only thing identified during her last inpatient admission was her lung cancer and does not think that psychiatric medications are indicated. However, she does seem to have some level of insight in regards to her physical health concerns. She's aware of her adenocarcinoma history and other multiple medical issues. Her main risks are financial mismanagement, misadventure, and self-neglect regarding her physical health concerns. Substance use. Annie has one glass of wine every day. She has nil history of withdrawal symptoms and denies any other substance use. So Annie has a Cushingoid appearance. It's characterized by a central adiposity, a buffalo pad on the back of her neck, thin legs, she would bruise easily and has redness in her cheeks. 
Annie has profound multimorbidity affecting every organ system. Endocrine. Possible pituitary microadenoma. This requires investigation, however, Annie has been refusing to undergo a dexamethasone suppression test. She also has type 2 diabetes. On ophthalmological review, her eyes are miraculously healthy. However, with continued poor glycemic control, retinopathy, vision loss are imminent, as well as renal failure. Cancer. Annie has had lung cancer and breast cancer. She also has Barrett's esophagus as a result of chronic reflux. That's where the esophagus turns its cells into intestine cells. This is a massive risk as it can lead to a poor prognosis, esophageal cancer. Autoimmune. She has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, causing hormone imbalance. Cardiovascular. HbA1c is a reflection of a patient's glucose control in a three-month period. Her HbA1c is insanely high, greater than 18, which shows that her sugars are out of control. A normal range is less than 6. She has severe hypercholesterolemia as she's refusing medications. She says, I don't believe in cholesterol medications. I eat oranges to lower cholesterol. She also has hypertension, she's obese, and meets the criteria for metabolic syndrome. Respiratory, right lower lobe removed due to lung cancer, thus her lung function is mildly abnormal. Neuro, the treating team have many neurological concerns, however Annie is refusing all imaging. This multimorbidity is not just a risk to her quality of life, but it also creates a polypharmacy concern as it's very complicated trying to balance all the different medications against her required treatments. Her physical health concerns are further complicated by her mental health as these physical treatments are reliant on voluntary patient engagement. Annie's psychiatric history begins late 2017 where she suddenly became irritable, aggressive and impulsive following a round of chemotherapy. She was impulsively buying houses and giving large sums of money to a stranger. This led to the breakdown of many long-standing friendships. In 2018, ACT had an encounter with her long-term partner Penny. Penny reports worsening hoarding behaviours, a gradual two-year change in personality, coarsening, increasingly disinhibited, and becoming more intrusive, some symptoms of mania, and thought disorder. In December 2018, she conducted sexual assault. She performed a vaginal examination on another patient, leading to an upper notification and an admission to MICU. Late 2018, she was startled on lithium. However, she would soon self-cease. The treating team explored the option of ECT, however, this was promptly declined by the patient. In 2021, Annie was brought in by ambulance to ED after verbal aggression towards employees at a massage parlour. This seemed to be triggered by the full sale of her home and separation from her partner Penny. She is reported to have given $60,000 to a baker named Simon. Annie is reported to be spending over $500 on food each day, hoarding and throwing rubbish around the house. Her place is extremely squalid. There are nil known mental health risk factors identified from her family history. Annie's unmanaged mental health has had a catastrophic effect on almost every aspect of her life. She went from a previously very high-functioning, independent individual who was a director of nursing at a prestigious hospital. Now she has lost almost all independence. She's refusing treatment for her physical health concerns and now she's losing functioning. She's separated from her long-term partner. She's becoming socially isolated. She's neglecting her own needs. 
She's now under guardianship. Interestingly, she actually proposed to her guardian, Terence. However, he declined the invitation. Annie has identified a variety of triggers. These include when she doesn't take her medications, uh, she has a low tolerance when it comes to engaging with the treating team, when she's not allowed to have her leave, when restrictive rules are enforced, such as her not being able to have a phone charger with her, she feels she's not being listened to, where she feels threatened or unsafe, and when she's asked to do things which she does not want to do, such as taking medications she does not like. Annie has many strengths. She is kind and compassionate. She is motivated, has different hobbies and interests. She likes cooking and knitting. She enjoys the outdoors. She's creative. She's a clear communicator and she's resilient. Nurses must check for changes in behavior, document and notify the team if any changes occur, undertake regular risk assessments and assess her mental state, maintain care levels checks and encourage medication compliance. Annie responds well to a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. This helps her feel supported and that her needs are being met. Unfortunately, Annie's hoarding is often a point of contention. As such, nurses must take a consumer-led approach and be very supportive to maintain a clean room environment for her. As well as close physical health monitoring, given her comorbidities. Unfortunately, Annie's story doesn't yet have a happy ending. She remains as an inpatient in a mental health ward. Yes, there's been some positive outcomes. She's been appointed guardianship to look after her personal finances, and they've been able to rule out some organic causes for her mental health decline. Since being admitted, she has deteriorated rapidly. She's become increasingly more labile and aggressive even assaulting several staff, including a student nurse. She's previously stated that she becomes more unwell as an inpatient. But with the four years of extensive mental health input, not a lot has been achieved to improve her actual quality of life. Although medications have been somewhat effective at managing her mood, she's made it very clear she does not wish to take them. A more assertive approach such as a CTO may not be appropriate or conducive for her recovery. Her issues of hoarding are long-standing, and she's refusing psychological support to address this. So what is recovery? At the end of the day, it is Annie's choice to live the way she wants to live. Annie has said it herself that her experience in mental health has been appalling, and all she wants is to be left alone. The way forward is to offer her social supports, perhaps a PICS referral, refer her to community supports to help with her daily functioning. Also prevents carer's fatigue, provide Terence financial, counselling and peer support. 